flyer or you you probably saw the flyer or you were part of our free contouring class that we had a few days back or a few weeks back and you just felt like okay i want to learn more and so i i believe there are two set of people who are here so pardon me please i believe there are two set of people who are here those who already know about pattern making um about contouring and those who and those who um I just hearing you for the first time, like I know about pattern making, but what's contouring? And then, of course, so there are two things. We have the free contouring class, and then this is an extension of that. And then there was also a flyer where we talked about how to avoid what I ordered versus what I bought. And then in Nigeria, you agree with me that a lot of designers are already finding themselves. So that that what I ordered versus what I got is like a net of a fisherman. Eh? and designers are finding themselves there and every time they will show a picture of what the customer sent and then another picture of what the designer made and it, it, it's now becoming so discouraging and so disappointing because it looks like designers don't know what they are doing again Nigerian tailors don't know what they are doing again I once had a friend who um, who worked in Dubai as a fashion designer and then most of their clients were Nigerians most of their they do bridal wears mostly most of their clients were Nigerian. And then even the person who was in charge of that atelier, that's the fashion space, the fashion house, she was wondering why Nigerians come all the way from Nigeria to Dubai to make a dress. I mean, because the money you spend even in transporting, you have to fit. And then sometimes those who trust them can just tell them to send it down. But even the money you use in sending down is still a lot of money. And then they wonder why do, why do they have to come all the way when they are designers there and then they just, concluded that Nigerian designers don't know what they're doing or they don't give them the right results. And of course, if I am the one, I would also ask you, why are you not making it in your own town? You know, I'll ask you why you're not making it. So if you tell me, oh, I gave, and the truth about this is, let's, let's look at this from the perspective of we being the customer. If you spoil my clothes the first time, spoil it the second time, I won't give you any cloth again. I me, mean, I'm even generous. Some people want to spoil their clothes the first time. They would never, what they would do is they won't patronize you again. Every member of their family will not patronize you. Their friends will not, even their enemies, they will tell them how bad you can be. I mean, I always say give people a benefit of doubts. They can make mistake once, but at least allow them again the second time. If they don't make the mistake, then you can go. But we must understand that this is business, right? This is a business of, um, it, fashion design is more of a business of emotion because you are selling them an emotion. It's not really the dress they are wearing. All right. It's not really the dress they are wearing. It's how they feel in the dress, how confident they feel in the dress, how happy they feel in the dress, how people look at them and they're like, oh, somebody just passed. And then they feel that sort of importance. They want to dress as if they are a billionaire. Yes, they are just. 2K, okay, they are all gentle okay that they borrowed from their friend, that you're in the business of selling emotions. It's not really about the dress because we always focus on, oh, the dress, the dress, the dress. That's why you feel like, oh, whatever I give them is what they take. No, they want to be happy in that dress. They want to feel so confident in that dress. They want to feel like, oh, you charge me this amount. When I'm wearing the dress, I should feel like it's worth much more. I myself should feel like it's worth much more. Some of them might have low self-esteem. And what you are doing is it's the dress that is making them feel so highly esteemed. All right. And that's why you must understand that, yes, apart from pattern making in Nigeria, um, what we hear most times, so learn pattern making, learn pattern making. And I always say that there are principles to this thing. There are principles to this thing. So it's not just about learning pattern making or you must understand what is what is going into what that gives you what results. I don't know if you if you understand what I'm saying. For you not to be a part of those people that Bella Niger will drag or Insta blog will drag and say, this is we get this design. Because see, when you when you just click on Instagram, Insta blog, and then you see a designer and they say, Oh, uh, so so house of fashion, we order this on them, they send a screenshot of their conversations. And then this is what they gave. And because you don't know the person, it doesn't really touch you. You don't feel anything. But have you ever imagined that if you were the one there, how would you feel? 
how would you feel like i don't know if you want to answer it you can answer it in the um chat box if you were the one being tagged and being told that oh see forget that uh, our customer did not have that shape of who see I, I understand that yes, some of those also applies when you make designs and maybe the customer sends a picture of someone that has figure eight and the customer is not figure eight. She's probably figure zero. Forgive me to say that or anything. But then that is why you're a fashion designer. You, you, are, you, are, you are like an artist. Eh? You are molding their body. It's so fine. You, you, you can't give them the body they don't have. But you can make sure that the dress fits like it's it's glued to their body, so they would see. And then there's a there's a way you can make a design, and they will know is there. The only thing different from this design is their shape. The only thing different is just the shape of the design they sent you is different from their own shape. They will know every other thing fits. All right, so let, let's. I, I I want to just that's why I came up with this class that so even because if i want to charge for this class trust me i'm going to charge a whole lot i'm going to charge a whole lot but it's it's up to me most times when i see designers and they feel like all they just need to know is how to cut and sew and then how to dress patterns and i feel like somebody needs to tell them this it's more than that it's the principles and the application of that pattern manipulation that you do that gives you the best result all right, that gives you the best results. If you are still following me, please, can you type in the comment section that you are following? So I know I'm not the only one here. Can you just type in the comment section that you are following and you are getting what we are saying? You are following and you are getting what we are saying. All right, so I would like to continue. So in, in fashion designing and then in pattern drafting, so I want to believe that about 70% um, of people here do pattern drafting. So there are, for you to make a dress, for you to make garments, basically, there are two different methods, three different methods, actually. There are three different methods in making a garment. So one is free hand method. Free hand method is when you draft directly on your fabric. All right, thank you so much. Free hand method is when you draft directly on your fabric. So you're using your tailor's chalk and then drafting everything, your neckline, your arm, or everything on your fabric. Now, the other method is pattern making. It's also otherwise called pattern drafting. So that's the process of drafting first on paper before transferring to fabric. It's the process of drafting first on paper before transferring to fabric. Now, I must let you know that Pattern um, free and on paper is different from pattern making. F pattern making involves construction. It involves construction. So when I say it involves construction, it means that um, there are different things you need to put in place. There's a construction of the ammo. You're not guessing what the ammo is. You're not saying that, oh, for a size, for a size eight, you can use eight for the ammo for a size 10 you can or no so i learned free hand and i learned pattern so i can it, it's okay for me to tell you some of the things that have been done in free hand so i'm not saying that free hand is bad and i'm not saying pattern drafting is bad or anything i am just saying that they all have the advantages all right so in free hand what we did then was people within a bust size so let me, let me bust 34 inches to 36 you can use ammo of eight inches to nine, but um, forty to this. They add their own. They add their own. Um, their own ammo. Okay, and what that does for you is that it's difficult to pass that kind of knowledge. So if you give me a range and say just use eight, just use nine, and you're not telling me how you arrive there, you're not telling me how to get there. You're not telling me how I can because if I keep saying I learned, if if you teach me that and I learn that and then. I come across someone who is bust 50. What am I going to do? What application? Is it that I'm doing this plus this minus this gives this? So I'm sure that I'm correct when I do that calculation. But when you tell me to guess, it's difficult because fa in fashion designing, you don't work with just one particular size. Except if you are doing ready to wear, and even ready to wear, they come in standard sizes. So the only advantage you have over that is you are the one who creates your size, and then people also alter your designs to fit their size. 
all right? But if you are doing bespoke tailoring, you have to work with different body sizes. Same, they can even be same size, different body shapes. Bust can be the same, the lower parts can be different. So you must know how to put in some structures, how to put in some principles that guides you, even when you work with different body, body structures. Okay, so I was saying that different ways to draft um, to make garments. I explained freehand, I explained pattern making. And then the third aspect is draping. So I said first one is freehand, second one is um, pattern making, you know, pattern drafting. And then the third one is draping. So draping is the art of um, arranging your garment on your dress form of or conform is like molding the, the fabric on the dress form. So some well something like what I have here is not draping really but it could give it will, it will serve as an example for draping. It could serve as an example for draping. Um you would see it we, we don't use it mostly in Nigeria. What we use mostly in Nigeria is free and and um pattern making. But if you follow on um, international designers, um, I think those Italian designers, Russian designers, most of them use draping. So they just drape. So what they do is they have different but, um, dress forms. This is an example of a dress form. This is an example of a dress form. You can also browse it. The, the camera is not capturing it. So. But they are different um, dress forms and they have to get different dress forms of different sizes. And then they now drape whatever design they are making on the dress form. It's manipulation of fabric on the dress form. All right, so when they now do that, they, they, they still use their pencil. So they have to work with muslin. Muslin is what we call calico here. Teru, okay, that's a popular name. Teru, that's, that's what we call it here. So they use that, drape it on the dress form and then draw out whatever shape, design, what kind of neckline they want, draw it out, and now transfer it on paper and then transfer to the fabric. So it's like, sometimes they don't transfer on paper as well, they just like transfer it to the actual fabric they want to use. So it's like the fabric itself is the pattern. So you know in pattern making, the pattern is the paper. Mm? In free and you don't have pattern. In draping, the, the muslin, the, the calico is the pattern. All right, all right. So, um, so just to know that you are following, I want us to list three uh, methods that I just mentioned on how to make a garment. Three methods on how to make a garment. Three methods on how to make it. So, just write this in the comment section. Three methods on how to make a garment. Okay. So, um, so after knowing how to construct a garment, it doesn't end there. All right. It do you you. I want to even ask a question. So. We are here, we are talking to each other and nobody's judging anyone. We have all, I've, I've had issues of what I ordered versus what I got before. That was when I was using free and then I had issues like the person Pascal told me what you made for me is rag. Yes, and I almost cried. You know how customers can be because they paid. So imagine if you're the one as well and then you just need to be. And this is my best position that I use for even Instagram life. You know, but um, please, I apologize for that. We are back again. All right. So, um, uh, what was I saying? But um, let's just understand those three concepts. And then even after knowing how to, so whether you're using free and pattern making or the draping method. And I must also say that these are the three methods I know. Okay. So it's possible for, for us to have other methods. You know, so I'm not saying they are limited to all the three methods, but these are the three popular methods I know or I have seen that has been used in making garments. Okay, so now in pattern making, there are different principles applied. So you use all those patterns in um, all those methods in making garments. So you can easily anybody can make garments, but now if you want to be a dressmaker or a fashion designer. You are putting in, you just don't say I'm a fashion designer when you just start peddling machines. Mm -hmm. you, you can say, oh, I started peddling machines, but you need to know how to sew. You need to know how to do some things. Okay, but if you want to call yourself a fashion designer, I always say that if you want to do something, put in your all. Okay, so end that title. 
I want to be called a professional. So let me put it this way, professional fashion designer. So let me end that title. Why would they call me a professional fashion? The dresses I make are professional. They are international standard. All right, so now I want, I want to just go so that before the next talk, just keep rushing me off. There are different principles applied in pattern making when it comes to achieving fit. All right, there are different principles applied in pattern making. And also, it's, it's just like me stating to you some basic um, principles you can apply, avoid being what I got. Mm? So after this class, after this class, I want to make sure that everybody on this Zoom, as long as you came here, type in the comment section. Okay. All right. So just, um, just to start with, I would like to ask us, so you just drop in the comment section, if you have ever experienced um, what I ordered versus what I got. So whether they dragged you online or anything like you ever encountered a situation where your customer gave you this style and you you touched that was the style you made but for one reason or the other when the customer came to test the dress maybe it wasn't just fitting around some sides the neckline you know maybe the arm or the shoulder the sleeve something was just wrong it was that same style you made they put flower here you put flower they put belt here you put belt they put uh, two nets here, you put two nets. But for some reason, it just looks as if it was not professionally done. And you kept looking at it. There was just nothing for you to change on the dress. It was the same thing you did, but it was not fitting. So let me know if you have ever um, encountered that. Just tell us, have you ever? So if you have encountered that, just say, yes, I have. Yes, I have, because I asked the question earlier, so some people are saying yes. I don't know if that was that's what they are saying yes to. So just say yes, I have. And then I'll just pick maybe like one person to um, you share with us. So just like five minutes, you share with us. We are stopping this class by 9.30, 9.30, yes, so, so we can take questions. So you, you can just share with us um, you, how you, what the experience was then what you did. So if you didn't find any solution at all, no problem. That's why you're in this class, so that you can learn. But then if you got a solution to it or what you think the problem was, okay? So um, if you want to share with us, just, just raise your... You could just accept me the way I came to be. My network has chosen to deal with all, all this. All right, so just... Just raise your hand. Okay, blessing. Are you raising your hand to share with us? Are you raising your hand to share with us? Blessing, are you raising your hand to share with us? Because um, as fashion designers, you are not a magician. You you should note that down. I, I hope somebody has a jot and a pen. Note that down. You are not a magician. So you must know that you are practicing unto perfection. There's a verse in the Bible that says we are all working towards perfection. You are practicing unto perfection. So it means that it is not all styles you get at once. You might go and drag your customers, let them come and hear now. It's not all styles you get. There are some styles that you are just seeing, you are encountering them for the first time. So you, you've never even done something like that before. So I always advise my students that if you come if you uh, if you come if you see a design sorry if you see a design that you've never done before and you feel like oh I might not get this at once try them with a toy first try them on a toy so toy is spelled T O I L E T O I L E so a toy is a cheap garment that that is used to test a design to see how a design looks like all right, so I'm giving too much details in this class. Nobody wants to share with us. Uh uh. Why? You want only me to share. Let me, blessings and are still on, it's still up. So, blessing, I'm trying to unmute you now so you can share with us.
and if blessing is not responding so if you want to share with us just write it in the comment section that you would like to share write it in the comment section that you write you like to share and then i'll just unmute you so you can share just say i would like to share so i'll just unmute you all right so um the reason why i wanted us to share is because i know that it, for you to even be in this but you might have experienced that. And see, let's not lie. A, a larger number of us have experienced this what I order versus what I got. Just that our own, uh, <laughs> our eyes have not open reach Instagram, Instagram, you know, but of course, maybe in the press of learning, when you were just starting, there were some things that you didn't put in place. Okay, so I'm going to talk about two things today. I can't cover everything. There are a lot of things that you need to put in place one why creating designs and why making them. Okay, so there are some designs that you can't just cut and sew like that. You can't just cut and sew. And if you check all over Instagram, you see that there are a lot of designs, complex designs now, professional designs now, that are not just even the average boo-boo, the normal long gown dresses. They are closely fitted to the body. And then you want to be the likes of or all this amazing designers, Matok Beda, Vicky James, you know, all of those people. You want to snatch the waist, you want to make sure the neckline is flat, they are not bending down and then the cloth is just dangling. You know, that's that's what basically gives you the what I order versus what I got. Because now, I, I don't know how many people saw the flyer to this class, but if you saw the flyer to this class, you would see um, a picture on the flyer. If you saw the flyer, just say just say yes, you did. Just say yes in the comment section, in the chat box, right? Sorry, in the chat box. Just say yes, you saw the picture. So I know that you understand what I'm saying. Just say yes in the chat box that you saw, you saw that picture, the picture on the flyer. If you saw the picture on the flyer, you see um, a lady and then another lady. So they were putting on the same dress. The only difference, color. But you would see, yes, thank you, thank you, um, Kemisola. You would see that that design was different. But yeah, if you look at this, if you, if you can access the picture, oh, I don't know if I can share it. Yeah, let me see if I can share. Um, this is the design. I don't know if you can see it, but this is the design. And then when you take a look at this design. Why you take a look at this design? Are we are we still with me? Oh, you can't you can't see it though. Can you see it? Can you see my screen? I'll need you guys to be able to see it. Can you see my screen? Oh, okay, you can see it. So let's just analyze this design together. We are in class. So when you look at this. This design now see if you actually saw this design and you laughed hmm? it's not because this person made the exact design so i'm just going to show you how to avoid because i saw it that's what i got they all still had the same issue now let's analyze this design look at the lady in white and then the one in green look at the upper part of the neckline there's the lace color on the neckline look at the one on green do you have a lace color Yes, you do. Now look at the lower part of the lace, that part that looks like M, M shape, the upper part. The upper part, let me, let me see if I can, yes. All right. I want to see if I can highlight that so that you know what, what I'm saying. So this, this part, oh, sorry. So this part here that I'm pointing to, okay? This part I'm pointing to here. Do you still have that same here on the green? Can you see, can you see what I'm pointing to? Can you see it? I might not be able to see you guys um, this thing, but I hope, okay, I can still see that my screen is recording.
Are you guys with me? I just need to come here to see if you, if you are still with me. Yes, you see the chat box because I'm shuffling between the two. All right, okay, so you can see this, you can see this. So it's the same thing there, it's the same thing here. And then you can also see, you can also see this, the second neckline. Can you see, I'm trying, I'm using this red button for you to see what I'm showing you. And see this U shape. You can also, it might just be slightly different here. Huh? You see the skirt, it has skirt. This is the skirt part. That's, of course, that's the lower part I'm talking about. It has that. But yes, just keep that picture to yourself because I want to come here and see um, what you guys are doing. All right, so how many of you saw that? How many of you saw what I just showed you? Just write in the comments in the chat box. How many of you saw that? So that's what we want to talk about. And then these are the, these are the things you apply to any kind of design. Okay, you did. All right, so now you would you would want to, okay, so let me even trade to you. What, what did you think? You've seen it, we all have seen that. And we saw that same design though, it has scallop here, the green has scallop. It has this M shape, the green has M shape. It has this plunge neckline, the green has it. They use lace and lace. It has both plain lower parts, lace at the upper part. So tell me, what was the problem? Let's straight to you. Let's see if um, we are we've been following. So you, you, of course, you don't need to be right. So don't try to force that, oh, I have to be right if I post right what's, what is on my mind. No, that's why you're in this class. That's why we are, we are learning together, all right? So we have more 15 minutes more for this class. And I've not even, <laughs> I've not even thought most of the things I wanted to teach you guys. So please just write in the chat box, what do you think was the issue? Fitting, okay? Vicky says fitting. Vicky says fitting. Let's hear from someone else. Let's hear from someone else. Let's hear from someone else, please. Let's let's be fast about it. Let's be fast. Some people still need to go and cook for their hobby, you know. So um, please, let's be fast about it. It's not even an ideal. It's not healthy to eat by this time, but we have a choice. So let's let's hear from someone else. Let's hear from someone else. Wrong nets. Hmm. Wrong nets. You need wrong nets. Okay. Um. One more person. One more person. One more person. If I tell you. One more person. One more person. One more person. If I tell you. The right principle for making garments was not applied. What principle? Not well controlled. Okay. Chidima, you were in that our class. That's why you can answer this question. You were in that class. All right. Um, okay, so we've had about four people. So someone said fitting, fitting, fitting. So that, that fitting will bring us to, to our topic. And then somebody said the wrong net. Well, maybe because, but then if that is what, see, if you provide me with what's the worst lace or what's net, eh? if you apply the right principle, that dress will still come out well. So even in all of these things, I think I'll even go more with fitting because if exactly, Esa says it didn't fit into the body contour. Look at the one on white. I wish you can just be looking at, of course you can, you can zoom can allow you to minimize and then you also see the picture. So if you are looking at the picture, you will see that the lady on white, had it fitted? Look at the lady on green, look at the bust area. Look at the bust area here. Yeah? Somebody says for the white, the cut and fitting was not well fitted. The cut and fitting of the lace was perfect and the green was not well fixed. Oh uh, yes, that, that can also go. But look at this area of the green. Can you see as, as though it was, it was close like together? I'm sure that plunge neckline was also achieved on the green dress, but then it, 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 came, in, it came in inside. So it's um Yemi K says green dress maker. Oh, it's it has gone. Green dress maker needed to know about the fabric being used, taking proper measurements, understanding body contouring patterns to the body. Yes. So let's even leave fabrics. I'm talking about if your customer says I cannot afford to buy that white fabric, it's green fabric I have. What are you going? To, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So um oh sorry, we are working with time. I may not be able to put up the dress again. Okay, so um, I'm going to just um, review to you two things. 
that could have made that dress better. Two things that will pull, pull you out of what I love as what I got into your own design being the what they want to order. Mm? So two things. One I'll discuss on this slide, the other one I've discussed before. So if you're on our WhatsApp group, I am going to drop a link to that video. Um, so two things is pattern contouring, that's number one, and um, design analysis or design interpretation. Design interpretation and pattern contouring, one and two, pattern contouring and design interpretation. So design interpretation covers the fact that you need to interpret the design. Now that person did about if, if they say in terms of interpreting designs, I'll give the person, or if they say over hundred, how did they interpret it? I'll give them seventy because did you see the things I pointed out? Was it the same with the white design? Yes. The major issue on that dress was the fitting. Which pattern contouring would have taken care of? Yes, yes. Of course, I'm saying the the fabric is important, but that's not what we are talking about in this class. So when you when you I'll link. I, I made an Instagram live, I think about one hour or two hours long, of design interpretation slash analysis where I dissected design. So how to dissect design. So with that, I talked about fabric. So the fabric, um, um, this fabric topics and everything is in under design interpretation. It's under design interpretation slash analysis. So you, you need to know that there are some designs that you can't just use any fabric you like for them you need to use a particular fabric you can't just use any kind of fabric okay but for this kind of design i could use there are varieties of lace that could still work for that design if i don't want to use the the white lace fabric there are varieties of lace that could still work for that design what needed to be that that same dress you give me that same green dress contour it different areas it will give you that white design Okay, so I'm going to, I, I can't um, talk, start talking about design interpretation, it's a class on its own. But what I'm going to do is those who are on, our, on the WhatsApp group, free group, I'm going to, or even if you, you're not on the group, just go on Instagram and type um, at Low Sodium Design School on our page. So just scroll down, scroll down to the picture. So let me just type this in the, in the chat box so you get the spelling. Okay, so I just typed it there. You can just check on Instagram and you can also follow us as well. So just scroll down, it's, it's a very, I think it was shoot far back, not this month, not last month. But just check, just scroll up, check. You see, I think maybe design interpretation or design analysis. It's a video, sit down and watch, sit down and watch. You don't want, you pick one now, if you don't want tight clothes, then don't wear. <laughs> You see the white design is fitted. Okay, so the other one that I said is pattern contouring. And then you want to ask, what is contouring? What is contouring? It's just a principle in pattern making that is used to achieve close fitting. I'll come again. It's a principle in pattern making. Somebody can even type this in the chat box for us. It's a principle in pattern making that is used to achieve close fitting. And then let me shock you. Every pattern you make needs to be controlled. Every pattern you make needs to be controlled, except if they are basic patterns. Except if they are basic patterns. Okay, so if it, you don't just contour a pattern because you want it tight. Yes, contouring does that for you. But yeah, that's why we have different levels of contouring. We have different, so if I say you need to contour all your garments except basic. So when I say basic garments, it means garments that um, if you do pattern making, you always, we have the five basic bodies, the upper bodies, lower bodies, front and back, and then the sleeve. And they are in their basic form before you alter them. So those ones in their basic form, you don't need to alter, you don't need to contour them. Okay, so please, if you, if you understand what I'm saying, just... Just type in the comments so I've not gone past your level or I've not gone below your level. Okay, so just type or just give us an emoji that you understand. Okay, so you need to control. So controlling is okay. Thank you, honesty. Oh, uh -huh, honesty. <laughs> 
All right, so the contouring is just, that's why I use, of course, there could be bogus terms that we can use to explain this, but what will you profit if you don't understand what I'm saying and I'm doing big grammar? Hmm? So um, it's just a principle in pattern making used to achieve close fitting. So now achieving the close fitting could be anywhere. It could be anywhere. It could be your neckline. It could be your arm, or you could be your 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 bodies anywhere. It could be your waist. You know, sometimes we we encounter gaping neckline gaping. So it's like when you bend down, you can see your bust. It's not supposed to be like that. It's not supposed to. Thank you, Fatima. It's not supposed to be like. I feel like giving somebody gifts before the end of this class. <laughs> ah, all right. So it's. Not supposed to be like that. You're supposed to make your garments the way, even when the person look at what I'm wearing. Now, this is a camisole though, but look at it the way it is. Even if I bend, it doesn't fall off like this. It doesn't fall off like this. And then because you're in garments, um, you, you're making garments, you need to contour. So contour the neckline, contour some areas. Look at the underboss of that green dress. One of the reasons why the boss was not giving a good shape. So even if you didn't see that picture, I would probably send the picture again on our WhatsApp groups so that you can see it. Um, you, after looking, I'll, I'll send more pictures too. Yes, even aside those pictures, I'll send more pictures so that you can now sit down after this class, you will have learned something. You can now even analyze it yourself, dissect and say, what was wrong with this picture? What did make this picture look like this? You know, you can do that yourself. That way you can see you're improving. You are thinking wide. A fashion designer must know how to think of creative thinking. Okay, so now there are different um, ways of contouring. Like I said, that not it's not all clothes you want snatched, extremely fitted. However, there could just be some places that are puffy now, so they're not relaxing well, and you need them to relax. You need them to relax. So this is this is not just about oh holding this place and doing that. There are there are percentage you need to use. So in contouring, we have um medium contouring. Uh sorry, we have minimum contouring, medium, and the maximum contouring. Minimum contouring, medium, and the maximum contouring. And then it's also put in percentages, so you can say 50% contouring. No, there's 25% contouring, 50% contouring, 75% um, contouring, 100% contouring, 120, 150. Depending on how much you are going, how deep, how wide, or how, how much you are going, there are, there are principles to apply. Okay, depends on that. So it means that if I'm saying every design must be contoured, you want to see, feel like, oh, I just want to make a round neck top. You your neck is just this low, this deep. And then there's no special thing. Oh, I'm not even doing corset. Oh, I'm not doing anything. Why do I need to contour? So that's why I said there are levels to the contouring. 25%, 50%. You know which one to apply for which design and why you are applying it. Okay, so I want to give a quick example. Oh, we're out of time. I want to give a quick example. I don't know how many of us do makeup here. So just type in the comment section. I think we have mostly ladies here yeah, i think so so that no i think we have a few guys too i don't want to offend the brothers but mostly ladies when you go so either you are makeup if you're a makeup artist i know there are fashion designers who are also makeup artists just tell us you're a makeup artist you just also ask you just one question <laughs> that's one question and even if you are not a makeup artist, if you have ever done, if you have ever, ever heard the word contouring in makeup, there's a word contouring in makeup. As far as I'm concerned, I think that's where I even heard the word contouring. That's the first place I heard the word contouring. So if you have ever heard the word contouring in makeup, or they've contoured your face before, some of us have makeup artists as friends who say, oh, bring your face, let me use it to practice. And they say, I'm contouring this place, contouring that place. Contouring everywhere. So I want you to just type in the comment section, um, chat box. Sorry. So if I see comment section, just know it's chat box. Just type there. Nice. Hmm. Welcome back, please. I'm so sorry. I just changed my sim now. I was using MTN before. I just changed to Etel now. 
and just please um your friends that left already please just tell them we are back we'll be rounding off very soon just tell them we are back i'm so sorry for the network issue please i hope very soon we don't get to have these issues again hopefully now we might not have network issues i pray because i've changed my thing so um i was talking about makeup and i said we should please put in the chat box if 26 people see those of you that just come in i gave them a discount code but if you did not stay you ran away when i was not there so they benefited from that anyway so i was talking about the makeup so i said you might have heard them talking about contouring in makeup and then you wonder why are they contouring so i just want you to put in the chat box if you have ever done makeup and they contoured your face okay or if you're a makeup artist and you know about contouring so if you're a makeup artist right here i am a makeup artist if they've ever done contouring on your face you can type yes i've done um i've done face contouring I have done face contouring, but if I make up as a type, I'm a makeup artist because I want to ask the makeup artist a question. Okay. But if you don't have any makeup artist here, it's fine. Um, it's fine. Whatever I say here, you can just go and confirm it from your makeup artist friends. Um, just so you know. All right. So yeah, makeup artist. Wow, let me check who that is. Um, peace. Okay, peace. So Oh, let me see if I can unmute you. Let me see if I can unmute you. All right, so please, please kindly unmute. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you a question. Kindly unmute. All right, um, please, can you hear me? Yes, Give I me can. Mind. Yes, I can. Thanks for staying. Yes, you know, yes, yes. Passes, right? So do you do contouring? Yes, please, I do. Yes, please. Okay, so why do you do contouring on the face? Okay, um, we do contouring on the face to give an illusion of a slimmer face, especially if you have a broad face. Okay. Yeah. So, more like so it's literally it it's it's supposed to hide or make your face look smaller than it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Thank you so and there much. Are Thank you. Points, there are some angles that you need to do the contouring on. Okay, so if the person has a bigger forehead, you give an illusion of the contouring on each side of the forehead. So in that case, that size goes in and it looks like the, the forehead is only at the highlighted place. It gives okay. that smaller forehead look. And then if okay, you're so I'm listening. Oh, she has gone. I can't hear you. Contour again. goes to, you know, it's not all of us that have. I think basically that's it. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, so um I was about to, so what, one thing I got from what she said, one thing I got from what she said, she said that when you are contouring, you contour Can you hear areas. me? So, so, yes, I can hear you. We got that. Thank you so much. So one thing I got from what she said was that, um, so if you, if you paid attention to everything she said now, contouring happens in makeup. Okay, and then they contour different areas and why do they even contour? So I wanted us to say that because contouring in makeup is similar to contouring a pattern. Contouring in makeup. So if you're a makeup artist and you contour, you already have an edge, you understand what contouring is. Of course, if you're not a makeup artist, you still understand just that you, the makeup artist will understand faster because she already does something similar to that. So what the contouring does in makeup is that it gives you a slimmer effect. It's, it's, so I'm going to be using the terms using pattern, what contouring does in pattern and make it similar, show us in makeup. So if you look at a contoured face, it makes it slimmer. Some people who have big cheeks like myself, it tones it down, it makes their cheek, in fact, you, it will look as if you are seeing their cheekbones. I don't know if I'm right. Um, 
peace can also just put in the comment section if I'm right. It makes the cheekbones, it makes it look like, oh, we can feel your cheekbones. It makes it look slimmer. The, is your cheek that slim? No, but it's an illusion. What does an illusion mean? What does illusion mean? Illusion means that trying to make something that is not real look, or trying to make something look real or trying to make something, trying to give you an effect that, oh, something is there when it's not there. So I'm giving you an illusion, but it's really not real. But I want to give you a picture of that thing. So you see it, but it's really not real. That's what illusion means. All this illusion net, you are giving a feel. You want the person looking at this to look as though there's nothing there, it's your skin. But then there's something there. That's why we call it illusion net. Something. That's why we call it illusion net. Okay, so what, what contouring does in makeup is it makes it look slimmer. You put on, and you don't put, they don't do the contouring everywhere on your face. They just put in certain areas. I'm not a makeup artist, but of course I've seen this done in makeup. And then when I realized contouring in pattern making, I was not like, oh, that's why that's the same thing they do in makeup because it does the same function. So the same way you you have specific places where you do contouring in your, on your face is the same way you have specific places where you do contouring on your pattern. Okay, I hope we got that. In the same way, you ask specific places where you do contouring, you can't just contour it anywhere on your pattern. You can do too much contouring and you can do so little contouring. So it means that even if you want to do contouring, you must know what contouring to do for which style, for which design. Okay, so you can do too much tightening or too much contouring, and then you just end up finishing the whole thing. And you can do so little that it doesn't even account for what you really need it for. Okay, and then one other thing that she, she mentioned is it makes it look slimmer. So when you see that effect of, oh, they'll tell you about waist snatching. They'll tell you about waist, waist snatching, yes. Especially for those with broad face. Yes, I, I got you, please. Thank you so much. Thank you for telling us some of your trades um, work. All right, so it, it, it gives you that slim effect. So the same thing with pattern contouring. When you contour some certain areas, it gives illusion to some areas. So you can do some contouring and make it look like somebody who is not so busty, who has a small bust, it gives them an illusion of, the, of a big bust. And then someone who has a small bust, big bust, gives an illusion of a small bust. That's if that's what you want. If that's what you want. So when you look at that green dress, I hope that people who are here, yeah, um, we tossed the other time when, when I showed that green dress, you see that I made the bust look as though it's very flat. Is the person bust flat? Well, we might we cannot see. But then that same dress, you can give an, an illusion of a rounded bust if you consult the right way. It made everything come all the way down, no contouring. I could not see where the boss was re relaxing or resting well. Okay, so those are one of the things that contouring draws for you. Those are one of the things that contouring does for you. I, I, I might also share a picture of a face that was contoured and a face that was not contoured. But of course, it's not makeup you are doing here. It's just for you to see the similarities and help you understand well what contouring actually does. Okay, so it gives you that slim effect, that snatched effect, that tightening, you know. If the fabrics are too much on your body, like your arm oil is gaping, there's one part that is puffing up here, your neckline, there's one part that is standing here, it takes off the old concept of the design because I'm seeing fabrics, excess fabrics everywhere. Okay, so I, I made a quote, I said, gaping is a problem. So gaping is spelled G-A-P-I-N-G. When you have excess fabric in a certain area and then it doesn't make that area lay flat, that's what gaping means. Okay, and I said, gaping is a problem, contouring is the solution. So quote me anywhere, this quote was made by Lusodium. Gaping is a problem, contouring is a, sol is a solution. So if you ever have any issue with gaping, ah, my neckline doesn't sit well, your answer is gaping. Um, your answer is contouring. Ah, my arm O doesn't sit well, or my arm O stands, comes out like this, your answer is contouring. Oh, my underboss is not relaxed. Well, your answer is contouring. Oh, my back, this thing is, just, your answer is contouring. Okay? If your dress doesn't fit perfectly well, 
one of your answers contouring. So I said one of your answers because some other things might also be there, but a major part of that problem, the answer is from contouring. Okay, so another thing I want to do, so I'm rushing now, I'll take questions very soon. Another thing I want to show you is a pattern. So I always make slopers, slopers, I always make slopers. So um, I'll show you one sloper and show you that some things that's one of the reasons why you need to contour, okay? So yeah, I have a body, basic body sloper. I don't know if you can see it, but this is just a basic body from shoulder to hip. Okay, can you see? You can see. See, I can see it though. So I, I know I'm not alone. So this is the back. You might not see the lines, the darts and everything. So this is. I, I have another one here, but this one is a miniature. I think it's brighter. You can see this, but this is a miniature size. Um, I hope you draft your patterns like this. This is a professional way of drafting patterns where you label them. You label them, put your green lines, label center front, all of that, okay? So um, this is a basic body. This is, this is from, this is that, but I'll show you the big one. This is small. So for, for every pattern that you draft, okay, this is the back. Let's walk in the front. For every pattern that you draft, there is ease on your pattern. So whether you put it, or you don't put it. So most times in the process of constructing, you actually put the ease. So what do I mean by ease? This is the allowance, putting it in a pattern for comfort. So not all, all patterns, not all dresses are snatched, fitted, everything. Even your basic bodies, your basic bodies, when you sew it, it's not, it's fitted on your body, but you, you still have room. You still have room to, you know, uh, move around, shake your body. So patterns majorly are drafted with ease in them. So whatever uh, method of drafting you use, whether Natalie Braille and Armstrong, what's that technique, all of those techniques, they are always ease allocated in them. So your ease could be one inch, half an inch, CM, if you use CM like myself, 2.5 CM, 5 CM, you know, all of those things. It could be anything. Thing, okay, but one thing that you need to do is you would need so why you have ease with on your on your pattern is because your pattern is designed to be an overgarment. Your pattern is designed to be an overgarment. So overgarments in the sense that you wear something under that garment, that garment you're making, that is your that pattern you're making that you convert to a garment. It's an overgarment. So of course you have different, what I'm wearing now is an overgarment. What I'm wearing is an overgarment, right? This is a jacket, all jackets are overgarment because you wear them on top of a garment. Now what I'm also wearing inside is also another type of overgarment because I have, I still have underwears inside that I'm wearing on them. So you need to put ease on which this, what I'm, this one I'm wearing can, there's still room for the one under to relax. So it's not like I'm wearing it and it's so fitted, so tight, and there's no room for the one inside to relax. That is why you put ease. So because they understand that some people want to wear their singlets, their camisole under their garments. They want to wear um, their brazier, their everything under their garments. So you, they need to put ease. So the ease doesn't, the ease, the reason why you don't, sometimes you don't know that there's ease on your garments is because when you wear it, it's fitted. So it's not like, oh, it's big, I need to hold this. It's still fitted. So your way of construction still makes it fitted. So like the garments I have here, the pattern I have here rather, comes with the ease of 5 cm on in front. So 5 cm is about two inches. 5 cm is two inches. One inch is 2.5 cm. Okay, so it comes with 5 cm. And you also wonder, ah, I owe 5 cm on a garment. It should be very big and free. No, it is not. So now you also, for you to know um, the kind of ease you, you need to put, you need to know the kind of methods, pattern method you are working with. Some pattern methods have systems in place whereby even when you add it, it does not show that you have excess. So this now is a Natalie Bray pattern. This is a Natalie Bray pattern. Okay, this is all right. So this is a Natalie Bray pattern and 
the way that a brick pattern construction is, it already makes room for you to add the ease because sometimes you even chop off some things on your garment. So that is helps you to return it back. Okay, so now for when you are contouring, you need to remove all ease on your garment. So that's uh, removing of all ease is not in all garments. It's not in all garments. Okay, so I have said a lot, this is 10, 20. But what I want to encourage us to do is understand these basics. I can't teach everything here. There's a lot on contouring. Like you still, this pattern you have here is in our contouring class. So it showed, you, you come across designs like this on Instagram, different pages. They are coming all the way low. And then you see some edges here. Do you want the person's boss to be showing? They will hold you. They would arrest you. You know, but some of these things, we need to show it. We need to see what we can do to ensure that this doesn't, this doesn't be a problem. This is not a problem. How we can, what, how to control, when to control, why we need to control. Then to know the amount of contouring we need to do. There are a lot of things on contouring. I cannot finish in this class, okay? I can't finish this in this class. However, we have an online class, a paid online class. It's not free, an online class, but it's not a Zoom class like this. It's a, um, it's a video that's been recorded already. So you get access to the videos, you have, you own the videos, you have the videos um, to watch at your leisure hour or anytime. So it's a masterclass on pattern contouring. So it gives you introduction to the contouring, when to contour, how to contour. Um, if you're on the group, I can share the flyer. So the class is just 5,000 naira. The class is 5,000 naira and it's starting on Monday. We already have people who are registered for the class. We have people who are registered for the class, but the class is 5,000 Naira. But if you want to register for the class, you can just, um, let me drop my number in the chat um, room. I'll drop my number. Some of you have my number already. And I'll also drop our WhatsApp, our Instagram handle. So you can either send a DM on WhatsApp you can either send a DM on WhatsApp. Oh, the amounts and CDs. Ooh, I don't know. Maybe someone else can help us, but I don't know the amounts and CDs. But I could I have a Paystack link, so you can use Paystack to pay, really. You can use Paystack to, I think Paystack might convert it for you. The advantage of the paid classes, you get to ask all questions. You get to see it's live. Like we did a 3D presentation on both fabric and on pattern fabric and on pattern. So I cannot, I cannot explain that here, of course. I can't explain even the way network was doing. You know, I can't explain that, but there's a video that you have that you get to watch at your own time. There's nothing like network issues. Okay, so you can just use my number or if you have my number already, send me a message on WhatsApp, tell me you want to register. Okay, and so I'll be taking questions. I'll be taking three questions from people. So I, I know that, I don't know if we've even learned anything. Maybe because I was going on and off, you don't understand what I was saying. But I want to take three questions. Tell me, so if you want to ask a question, tell me if you learned something from the class. I can help you if you're able to jot something down, then you can also ask your question. So three questions after the question, we round up the class. So those that need to go and be with them, with their husband or their wife, they can go. Okay, so let me know who has questions, if anybody has a question. If anybody has a question, so just type in the comments chat box <laughs> that you have a question and I'll just unmute you. Or if you want to type in the chat box, no problem. Oof. So you're waiting for questions or oh, people don't have questions. You don't have questions. And then um, um, while I'm waiting for questions, let me just say, that most of the time we see big designs, complex designs. I'm using Instagram because that's where you see the amazing designs mostly. Aside Pinterest, you know, um, you see amazing designs. But and then um, recently I realized that some secret was revealed about people using an app to snatch their waist to get the figures, all types of places where they have mistakes, you know, and. This can happen. See, I have a friend who once told me that she saw a picture of her friend who was a tailor and the person 
and the person and the person yeah and the person there sorry and the person made the picture it was really nice but she saw some little little mistake you know now fashion designer if you if they make a dress and something is wrong you will see it if nobody else sees it you will see it and then she saw it she said oh there's a little mistake on this dress she of course she didn't tell the person but she saw that there's a little mistake on this dress but she was wondering that if she can still cite the mistake from the picture how will the dress be like? So she the, the day she now saw the real dress, she saw more mistakes, more mistakes. And then she, it was like the pictures were able to hide some of these some of these mistakes. And what our advice is don't always run after pictures hiding your mistakes. So that you can freely, you see some designers who can post videos of their designs, even when their customers are wearing it. They are confident of that. I don't know for now if there are video editing apps that can snatch your waist, that can hide mistakes. I don't know. But most of the mistakes, are, most of the video apps I know are just for filters or all of that to reduce speed, increase speed. But even at that, know your skills, know your onions, the point that you can take your dress anywhere. You can make videos of your dress, any, even if you don't use filter. Don't rely on filter to, to help you eliminate one thing. Be able to say, oh, they can wear this dress to a party. And people will not say, ah, what we saw in the picture is even different from the dress in real life. Let your, let your dress be alive. If there's anything you take away from this life, let your dress be alive. Sometimes you say, oh, people should pay um, a certain amount for a class. And they're like, oh, I, I cannot pay. Is expensive or is this? This free class I did for you. I would have charged for it, but I felt like some people don't really even understand what contouring is, or they don't, some people are not, in, they are not hungry for knowledge. You just want to limit yourself to what you know is what you want to know. And yet, fashion designing is, is evolving every day. Tomorrow, this, that thing you, are, you know is not, even, is not even working again. That method is even outdated. That's why you need to upgrade yourself from time to time. So what I do mostly every month is I save up an amount every month to upgrade. Even if you can't save up, there are things like YouTube is there, um, Facebook is there. There are different places you can learn. However, what I always say is you can't compare free class to paid class. Paid class will give you more than free class. And so this is not even me trying to say, oh, okay. Of course, if you register, it's for the benefit of you and me because Yes, I have taught you this class, but there's a limit to which I can give you everything. There's a limit to which I can give. There's something I cannot even use mouth to explain. It has to be shown practically. And that was what we did in the paid class. So we showed you practically how to contour, where to contour, all of those places, practical. So it's not like we are teaching theory, practical. You get to see it and then, what, what I like to teach mostly is principles so that even when you encounter other designs, you won't come back and say, oh, how, can, how should I do this? You already know the principle that guides each design and you can apply it there, all right? So is the training going to be on contouring alone? Yes, there's a flyer. I don't know if, Khadija, if you're in our WhatsApp groups, if you're in our WhatsApp groups, you would have seen the flyer. Hmm, you might have not seen the flyer. Maybe you joined it. But if you're in our WhatsApp groups, I would send the flyer again. So on the flyer, there's... um. There's a course outline. So introduction to contouring, how to contour, um, different tightening, then even neckline, how to avoid gaping, um, 3D visuals on how to contour. So all of those things, yes, that is, it, it's majorly teaching you on contouring and, and neckline tightening. So, but if you also want to learn on maybe pattern making, introduction to pattern making, we have a different class on that. We have a different class on that, and that class is 7,000. This contouring class is just on a budget. So that class is 7,000 naira. So if you want, but if you are doing both classes, of course, I might give you a discount. I might give you a discount. The class um, caters for all types of pattern making. So I use Natalie Bray, but it doesn't mean that, oh, I didn't teach how you can apply that on other, for those who don't use Natalie Bray. If you're using both that technique, you're using, um Ellen Armstrong, they are using different things. They are using different kind of method. I don't, I don't, they're using different kind of methods. It still works for you. So even in the class, I was I mentioned it and I was explaining it what you do. 
Okay, so um, so going for the two training will be like how much? So Khadija, please, if you are on the WhatsApp group, just send me a message. Just send me a message on WhatsApp, a personal message. Just tell me this is Khadija from the Zoom class so we can talk. Okay, so just do that so we can talk. All right, so if you're on register, of course, you can send me a DM now. I'll respond to you. A lot of people missed this class. A lot of people missed this class um because they probably didn't send messages to join the class early enough so i could not respond to them before the class started um i would also send so i promised the design interpretation class as well just go on our page i already dropped our page and do just drop our page, just go to our page and check, scroll down, it's a free class, you're not paying for it. Just scroll down and check. That class is loaded, is loaded, is loaded. So just check, those are like, once you can get those two, if you know how to control and you can interpret designs, you can never fall into what I ordered versus what I got. You can never, you can never, okay? So um, if there are no questions, there are no questions. I don't know if anybody wants to. So just, you can just um, go after now, you can go on the group. So whatever group you are, whether the um, free consulting class one, two, three, or four, or even on your social media page, just, just type and um, go on the group and just type the things you learned. So you can just mention two things you learned from this class two things you learned from this class that you probably didn't know before, or even if you knew it before, it's opened your eyes more. So just go on the group and type, oh, I learned the three methods of making a garment. I learned what contouring is. I learned what draping is. Um, different things. So I said a lot of things. I, I learned um, the, the, the how contouring in makeup, how, how contouring in makeup um, applies to Contouring in pattern, how they are similar, different. I'm even saying, I'm even saying everything to you now. I'm already telling you, but you can just go on the group and type that because some people miss this. So even in press of you telling them some of the things you learned, it will also help them learn um, something. So they won't totally miss out in this class. They won't totally miss out. So even when we're having network issues, some people were also having network issues. So. In the press of that, you can type, you know, let's be our brother's keeper, say one thing, one or two things, even if it's not two, just if it's one thing. And if you learned about 10 things, write it there. Write it there now. Go there now and go and write it because you forget. You might forget by tomorrow. And I'm sure some of you did not jot notes. Will this recording be available? We will try to make it available. We'll try to, so if you are still in it, that's why I added most people to the WhatsApp group because I knew that it's easier to pass information to the group rather than me having to look for personal numbers. So from now on, so we'll pass information on the group. So if the rec recording will be available, I will let us know on the group, either between today, tomorrow, you know, or before the week runs out. I'll let you know if the recording will be available. I think we said a lot and it would be nice if the recording is available. So, um, Thank you so much, my more wisdom and knowledge here in class. Thank you, amen, amen. Thank you so much. Um, so I'll, I'll let you know if the recording will be available so others can see and watch, you know. All right, guys, I think it's time to go. Who is giving us a closing prayer? Who is giving us a closing prayer? I would be, so after now, I'll just be my DMs in case you want to um, register, send a message, you know. And we could also do maybe after the end of the class, if we have active students, what I always do for my online classes is um, active students who submit assignments regularly and who participate in class. At the end of the class, you can have a free Zoom class like this with me. That's why I said, those who might have taken this class for granted, I hardly even do Zoom classes, even for the paid class. But this was just like, okay, let's do a one-off. We are in the independence mood. <laughs> All right, so for at the end of the class, you could have uh, maybe about three students who are active in class, do a one-on-one -on -one class, Zoom class like this, we talk, so the, our minds to be on. We'll talk, learn more on contouring. 
you people, everybody needs to know more about this thing. So those Dubai people will not keep saying that Nigerian designers don't know how to do so. That's why the brides are coming to meet them. It's time for us to take over, please. That money they are taking is meant for us, not for them. I'm not beefing, but then that money is for us, you know. So please, please giving us a closing prayer so we can leave. Oh, thank you so much. Please giving us a closing prayer so we can leave. Ooh. Um, let me see. Let me see someone who did not. Selema. Selema, can you please give us a closing prayer? I hope you are not sleeping already. Can you give us a closing prayer? In Selema. Jesus name. Thank you so In much. Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. Precious Lord, we thank you for the successful lesson. We pray, Jehovah Emmanuel, that even as we have learned it, Lord, We'll work with it and perfect with it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the tutor. We'll pray for more wisdom. Enable her, Lord Jehovah Remane, to teach, Amen. Lord, and give her more wisdom, Lord, to reach out Amen. to as many she can, she can reach out to in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. So let me see if I can miss everybody. You can just say good night. Good night. Good night. <clears throat> All right. I wish there was enough time. We could have just get to know each other better, but we'll do that on the group. So you can you can actually unmute yourself. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thank you for the class. Thank you, my teacher. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good night, everybody. And you too. Good night. Thank you, Thank you so much, much Mom. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks for the class. You're welcome. Thank you. I hope I, you both would stay active because I would not close the WhatsApp group. So in case anytime you want to have free classes, then. and of course, paid class will always get more. So we hope to see you, paid class, free class, all classes. All right. Bye-bye. All right, good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye.